Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Rabbi Chaim Vishnevsky, and I'm the director of an organization called Yisari Hadas. My previous experience had been involved 25 years in Kiruv and very instrumental in building the firm community of Manalp in New Jersey. And now I'm working in yeshivas and with adults, dealing with answering questions, Amuna and Hashkafa questions. Amuna, we mean the existence of the Rabbanu Shlolem, Tarim Sinai, and Hashkafa questions, things like Shaloi Asani Isha, that sometimes people are bothered by these, these types of issues, or Tzadik Varaloi, or Fun, different sugyas, especially with teenagers, have come up very, very often. In the hallway, there are some free CDs you're welcome to take, and there's brochures out there. Myself and Rabbi Mechanic will be here through lunch. Please feel free to bother us and talk to us. The sugyas that we're talking about are Rechava Minayom. No way can we conquer, we conquer this topic in one hour. So that's what we're here for. You can talk to us after the convention. Please utilize our services. I'd like to begin by sharing with you an experience that I had when I sp spoke in public libraries during my years in dealing with Kiru Verheiken. I would go to a public library. In my case, it was the Manalvin Public Library. And there were hundreds of people in the room. And I would get up and I would say the following thing. I am an Orthodox rabbi and I do not believe in God. I know that there's a God. Now when I made that opening statement, of course the people in the room thought I was crazy. Maybe some of you also thought that. But by the time we're finished, the statement that I said, I know that there's a God, you will understand very well that that's not an exaggeration. And hopefully we all will know it ourselves too. I'd like to begin by showing you a short PowerPoint, which I like to do now, to, like, to share with you, to fill, in you, to fill in a little bit what I'm talking about. We're going to see some things from Sukkim, from the Rambam, there's a piece from Avi Ezri, Roshach's beautiful Sefer on the Rambam. And just to, we should have a, a really clear picture of what it is the Torah wants from us when it comes to Yoni Emuna and Yediya. On the top of the PowerPoint, as you can see, it's a Pusik from Parshas Veschanon. This is a Pusik we all know because we said in Elenu every day. It's in Parshas Veschanon. It's interesting, the Lashon of the Pasuk, the wording is, you should know this day. It doesn't say the Hamanta. Lest you think it's Lav Dafka. We're going to see that Rav Shach and Avi Ezri is going to say it's extremely Dafka. It means exactly what it says. If you look at the bottom, the Rambam, this is the first Halacha, in all of the Rambam's Yad Chazaka, the very first thing, the foundation of everything, the Rambam says the following thing. The foundation of all foundation and the pillar of all wisdoms. To know, it doesn't say Lahaman, to know that there is a prime creator. He brought into existence everything that exists in the world. Everything to be found in heaven and earth. Are only in existence because of the reality of his existence. So the Rambam's words, the Lashon of the Rambam, is to know. Well, what do we mean by know as opposed to believe? The Siach Yitzchak is a a very famous pirish. It's printed in the Siddur HaGroh. And the Siach Yitzchak defines what the word Yediyah means. We have to know what that word means, both for this halacha and both for davening. We say every day, The Rav gives us das, knowledge. What does knowledge mean? So the Siach Yitzchak says, The word 
Deya means something which is clear to a person with absolute clarity. Like your senses. You put your hand on a hot oven, you burn your hand, you know the oven's hot. Or many pieces of evidence prove to you, let you know something is absolute knowledge. So when the Rambam says that word, there's a mitzvah leda to know. He means there has to be evidence. It's not because I feel that way, I feel comfortable. It, it's, it's just something I enjoy doing. It fits in. No, there has to be evidence. There has to be something based on something very concrete. And now I'd like to show you something that Rav Shach and his Sefer Avi Ezri on the Rambam says. Now Rav Shach is bothered by a question. And the question he's bothered by is, when we talk about Hashem, we talk about Torah Sinai, people very often use the word Amuna. According to what we just said, the Rambam says there's a mitzvah to know, not to believe. So where does Amuna come in? What is the whole concept of Amuna? How does that work? So he quotes the Rambam that we just quoted, and he says, Hare yediyahi v'loy Amuna, in the highlighted part. It's knowledge, it's not Amuna. Hare she'ef she'le eloy la'adam le'da dovers that. person can actually know this, not just believe it. And the Rambam says the word in the, 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 on the bottom right, in the highlighted area. The Rambam uses the words, Haria Rambam, cause of Leidas Hashem, Harizu Yediyah. Well, because of them are Vyadat Hayoim. He says the words of the Pasik, or you should know. If that's the case, the Lama Zanikra Amuna, why is it called Amuna? So on the left side, he answers this question. He says a very amazing thing. When I saw this, I was shocked. Vishoalti. I asked this to, his, to my Rebbe, the part of it, Shiva, so he asked it to the Briskarov, Rav Yitzchak Zev Salavechik. The Omer Lai Shigam, who Omer Al Zev, the Shol Zeis Lov, a Goyen Rav Chaim Zatzal. He also had the same question. The Briskarov had the same question. And he asked Rav Chaim Salavechik, who was Nifter in 1919, the greatest Gedoli Ador before the First World War. Famous Briskarov. And the brisker of Chaim Salavechik said the following thing. That as much as a human being's own mind can understand, that's something, that's yediyah, that's muskel, that's seichel. That's not a muna. Amuna starts when a human being's mind cannot grasp fully the concept. And then he goes on and explains what, like what, for example, what's Amuna? The fact something which is not physical, all knowing, above time. Those concepts, which you know about the Rabbanu Shalom, that's Amuna. Now, I'd like to give you a mushal that I use all the time when I teach in high schools. The mushal is like this. There's a fellow in a cave, and he's stuck in this cave. There's an avalanche. Why is he stuck in the cave? Because he's up to here. Dirt piled up to here. He can't move. His arms can move. That's it. And he's stuck in there. He's getting hungry. He's starting to starve to death because he hasn't had food in a couple of days. So he screams out the top of his lungs, help, I need food. All of a sudden, flies in, corned beef sandwich. So he says, mustard. French's mustard flies in. Napkins, the napkins come in. Salt, salt. Coke, bottle of Coke comes in. Everything flies in as he asks for it. What does this fellow know? He knows that there's somebody outside supplying him with these things. There is some intelligent being who understands English, who, uh, who, wants, who is interested in him not starving to death, is supplying him with that food. That's knowledge. That's not belief. Anybody who would call that belief is out of their mind. They're insane. That's ridiculous. What does he believe? He thinks the person is kind, 
Maybe he's a cannibal he's trying to fatten them up. He doesn't know. He's under the impression, it's not nonsense, but he doesn't know 100%. The mohus, the metzias of that giver, he doesn't know much about. But that there is a giver, that there's someone outside giving him these things, that's not a matter of amuna. that's Yediyah. So that there is a Bari Eilam, that's nothing to do with Amunah. And Rashach actually cites the famous Medrash, Avon Ravina, who said, Mihu Bala Bira. Who's the one who created this beautiful castle? Who built this? Things don't happen by themselves. I remember speaking to someone who's a biophysicist, who's trained, Harvard trained. He told me that there's something called the laws of nature. It's not the chaos of nature. Laws are the opposite of chaos. The world is a series of mathematical equations. It's insanity to say it happened by itself. No one lives on that principle. No one actually believes such a thing. It's craziness. You find a pencil in a forest, no one's going to say that a tornado created the pencil. It's a simple lead pencil. What we know today from science. It's a Dover portion. And that's what he says, Rashach says in there, Miubalabira. You don't need anything more than that to know that there's somebody supplying us with the corned beef sandwich and the mustard and the coke and the napkins. Now, the next thing I'd like to progress to is about Matan Torah. And here there's a lot of confusion. The Lushan of the Pasik by Matan Torah is exactly the same as it is when it talks about the Metzias of the Bariolum. Again. You have to be very, very careful. The Ramban is going to say it's a loisas, it's a lav. You have to make sure not to forget what your own eyes saw. And you have to make it known, not make it believed by. The day you stood before the Baruch Shalom Har Sinai. Though really we're talking about history here. I many, many times I've asked, I've asked high school kids, I said, do you believe in the Civil War? Do you believe in the Revolutionary War? You believe in it? They think you're crazy. And it is craziness. It's a fact of history. Nothing to believe. It's knowledge. Someone who says there was no revolutionary war is insane. Matan Torah either happened or it didn't. There's no gray area here. And it's very, very easy to show people that it actually happened. And that is what the Torah is saying. You have to make it known to your kids. They shouldn't have a pick book. The Rambam, Periches, Mehilchus Yisari, Torah, the Ramban right there in Parshish Veschanan, we're going to read a drop of it in a minute. They make it very, very clear there's a mitzvah to know there's a Matan Torah, to know that it's a fact of history. It's not a matter of believing. The Ramban in the yellow below the sukkim, the second yellow part. The Rambanishman says, You have to be very, very careful about this. To remember where did the mitzvahs come from? It's not out of nowhere. Don't we have to take someone's word for it? You should not forget what happened at Har Sinai. It was a public thing. It was not a private event. No one just came out of the desert and proclaimed themselves a prophet. It's in front of the whole Am Yisrael. All the things that your eyes saw. This idea and make it known, not make it believable, but make it known. All the things that your eyes have seen. Forever, there's a mitzvah, the mitzvah's essay, a loisah say, you have to remember Maimon Harsinai and you must pass it on to your children. I was asked by a 12th grade girl this, this week the following question. She asked me, 
Why isn't it enough just to believe? What do you have to know for? And I saw the other girls in the room were all nodding their heads. Why is it Torah Mansach Yediyah? If you're a good boy or girl, you keep the Torah properly. I'm a maimon. No, what's this? What's this? on schlecht. It's not good enough. It sounds like from the Rishonim here, that's not good enough. Why not? I'll tell you why not. There's a very famous story, the deathbed scene. It's on Chav Chesom and Beis and Brachis. A Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. Rabbi Yechem and Zakai was on his deathbed, and his Talmidim came to him. the Tanoim Akdoshim. Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus, or Rabbi Yeshua, and Rabbi ben Hanania, the Chamisha Talmidim, we all know from Pirkei Avis. And they ask him, Barchenu, Rabbeinu, bless, give us a bracha. So he told them, Halavai, you should be as afraid of the Rabbani Shalom as you are of people. And they said, that's all? And he said, aha, uh -huh. I wish it were so. Don't people do things wrong and look over their shoulders? to see if someone's looking. Don't we all do that? Are there not things that we know very well that we might be very embarrassed when we get to the next world, when we see that movie being shown on the screen, and it's public to all the tzva, maraim, what we did? Aren't we scared of what people think? Do we not live in a vacuum? It's not about knowledge, it's about reality, folks. When Yiddishkeit is reality, you can't wiggle out of it. It's just reality. You don't do things wrong. And when the going gets tough, you do what you're supposed to do. But when it's, you believe it, you basically accept it, when you have stark and nisyanis, it's not so easy to pass those nisyanis. But you cannot run away from reality. We have to know that the Metzius or the Bari Olam is a more of a reality than the microphone that I'm speaking in. We have to know the reality there was a Maimon Sinai is more reality than the shtender that I'm touching. And our existence in this room, and the fact that we're hearing what I'm saying. It's much more reality. It's not an exaggeration. And if you don't get that, you're missing something. And that's not what a Kaddish Baruch Hu wants. He wants you to know. So how do we do that? So I'm just going to introduce to you the kind of things that myself, Rabbi Mechanic, perhaps others, talk about and share with the teenagers. It's going to be a pie chart. The aim, Shabakulam, 37 years ago, Arachim, with the advice and Hadrachar of Chaim Greinemann, began in Eretz Yisrael, and eventually it metamorphosized into many different areas. In England, they had Project Seed, and America became Discovery, and other things. But the original Arachim seminar is a five-day seminar. Try to get Americans to take off five days. It's not happening. Eric Yisrael, you can do it. And it has made hundreds of thousands of Bali Tshuva. So when I was approached by Yeshiva six years ago, and they had Bachram, teenage boys, who were sincere in their questions. And by the way, I must tell you this parenthetically, from battlefield experience, don't ever tell a teenager that their question is not valid. Because the question is not going to go away because you say that. It's going to fester and it's going to bother them. And if you don't know the answer, ask somebody who does. Do not tell them, There's only one sugi in Gan the Gemara says in Chagiga, that you don't ask certain questions. What was there before the world was created? I, that's an example of what it says there. But, you know, I don't think that's the burning question of most teenage kids. It's not. They really couldn't care less. What they're bothered by are things that are basic things that are addressed by the Gemara and the Rishonim and Achreinim. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Nobody's being the Chadish anything revolutionary over here. 
This is not the Chiddush that the Gedoyle Yisrael made a Hirasha and they started the Beis Yankov movement. That was a Chiddush. It was a Hirasha. This is not a Hirasha. This is all in line with Devei Chazal, every single bit of it. I remember when I spoke to Ruch HaMolshin and Ruch Feinstein and many other Gedoyle Yisrael about this issue. It's a Milsa de Pshita. All we're doing is teaching the kids Torah. And I'll illustrate this now. If you look at the pie chart, this is what I personally do. The Arachim Seminar is much bigger. I usually go in for like six to eight weeks to a yeshiva. Sometimes you go in for a one-time thing just to introduce certain concepts. If you're there for a few hours, you can do a lot even in one day. But what this pie chart is, it talks about different areas of evidence. And the percentages, as I do a symposium at the end, and I ask the, I ask the young adults, I say to them, what touched you the most? What really hit you? What really blew you away? Look how almost, almost exactly even the numbers are. 16, 18, 16, 15, 16, and 19. People are very multifaceted. People are different. The Yisrael is multifaceted. Within a person himself, he's multifaceted, and Klai Yisrael is multifaceted. The godless of the Arachim seminar is, is that it has so many different pieces of evidence. I actually present about 50. That even if one particular thing doesn't touch somebody, you got another 49, you got another 47. It doesn't matter. There's so much out there. So you'll look over here, you'll think this looks like secular sources, right? Archaeology, psych psychological, scientific, right? Well, it's not. You see what's on there? Historical, the Ramban Veschanon, the Ramban Perkhes Mihilchas Yisraeli Atayra, Kuzari also. These are all the Rishayim. All we're doing is being Masbir what the Rishayim say. Nevuah, Gemara and Sanhedrin, and Sadi Chesem and Alf, those who just learned Daf Yoimi. Nevuah about Eretz Yisrael being desolate when the Jews aren't living there. Atem Har Yisrael, Anpachem Titeno. Medrash Rabba, Shir Shirim, about the Koisel, about the Shari Chulva. The Ramban and Parshas, Bechu Kaisai. The Ramban and Parshas Kisavai. These are the Makuras for, the, for these, these pieces of evidence, which are mind blowing things. It's the cedar that's the Chachma, it's the putting together of it. Archaeology. Archaeology is Rechavim Minayam. There are things that I show people from archaeology that are Siyuas Gedolis beyond belief. I'll give you an example. But Siyu Gedolis to Tarshabal Pal. Here's a quick example. I once went on a tour. And uh, there was something that the archaeologists found. It's to the right of the Kaisel. It actually happens to be the, what they call the Southern Wall Excavations. 35 years ago, it was buried under rubble. Now they dug it all up. And there was a little petek there. It said the word carbon on it with a picture of a turtle dove. So the archaeologists found this in a little booth, which happened to be a store where they, where they sold carbonus. And they didn't know what it was. So this tour guide, who obviously wasn't, wasn't the person who was a Shema Shabbos, said, what do the archaeologists do when they don't know what something in archaeology is? You know what she said? They look in the Mishnah. They look in the Mishnah. Isn't that unbelievable? Mishnah and Shkollam. Chesamas. Amazing. There's so many things like that. Base Hatkia. Southwest corner. Har Bias. They blew Tkiyas right before Shabbos. Base Hatkia. They found something in southwest corner. It says Base Hatkia Lahavtil. The Lashana Mishnah and Sukkah. The sirens that they have in the cities before Shabbos come from there. Exact I must have ten things like this. And in archaeology there's many more. I just showed that many. It's amazing. Tershaw Pest, so solid. Messiah, Gomorrah and Bavakama, Rambano Parsha's boy. That's an amazing lecture. We use a Holocaust marshal and the marshal, the way you, we would commemorate the memory of the Holocaust is an exact parallel to the way we commemorate it's Yes Mitzrayim. A very powerful lecture. Psychological. There are things written in the Torah that no human being could write. There's a Ksav Seifer, the beginning of Parshas Bahar. It's Kedai to look it up. He's quoting his father, the Chassam Seifer. 
He's being a raya at Torah's min hashemayim. Chassam Soifer is writing this from the mitzvah of Shemitah. People would not give a mitzvah of Shemitah, self-destruct mitzvah. It's not with a Shemitah. I can't prove to you without proving the book from the book that Shemitah happened that didn't happen, Bismana bias. We have a Messiah that it did, the Nisim of Shemitah. But you don't give a commandment like that. Starve out the people every seven years. Or Aliyah Larego. Aliyah Larego. You have a Yom Kippur war three times a year. They know your borders are und undefended. These are psychological. These are brought in Achreinim. There's a Gemara in Bavim. It's a little different. So you get psychological proof. This is all Chazal. The godless of it is, is that many times Rebbeim or Amurahs may say these things over, but they say it piecemeal, piece here, piece there. People can always shrug things off. But when you put it all together with the Sidur, it's so powerful. I can't tell you how many times the kids, when they finish, they say, I have no more questions. I've spoken about things like Shalaya Sana Isha in front of feminist crowds who feel incorrectly that the Torah doesn't treat women properly. Oh, if they only knew. If they only knew. And I talked about Shalai Saniisha and things like that. The questions disappear. It's all there. It's just a matter, and I'm challenging the people in the room. If you don't know this information, it's your job to go out there and get it. <laughs>